This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video is about money, specifically how much all these robots actually cost. I could tell you it cost me about $100 in parts to build one mini mulcher, or that it cost me more than $600 to build Draconid, but neither of those are particularly useful metrics. Now, I know everyone wants to know how much it costs to build Division or Shrapnel Mine, and I'll get to that. But like many things, the real answer is going to be, it depends. I could tell you precisely what it cost me to make these robots, but not what it would cost you to make them. This video will touch on a few separate topics. Number one, how did I get started in the sport and what did it take? Number two, what did my robots cost with a full bill of materials listed for several of them? Number three, where does that money come from and in what ways do I optimize on cost? And number four, what are some recommended pieces of equipment that I feel are a good fit for anybody trying to get started in combat robotics? I am also going to make a follow-up part two video where I dive deep into what other bot builders are spending for bots of all sizes around the world. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. Part 2 will include recurring expenses like repairs, replacement parts, and travel expenses, plus big one-time purchases like tools and equipment. And no, I'm not just pulling numbers out of thin air. I sent a survey to a huge group of bot builders and got nearly 100 survey responses, with robots from the 150 gram weight class all the way up to the 30 pound weight class. I got a ton of super useful data from this. For instance, 92% of builders surveyed have access to or own a 3D printer. But that video will take a couple weeks for me to sift through all the data. For now, back to just me. Part 1. The beginning of Team Just Cause Robotics Let me tell you guys the story of how Team Just Cause Robotics really got started. I made a whole video on this topic, and I'll put a card to that above, but here I'm going to focus on different aspects of it, like the parts and tools that I used, and more about the build of Division version 1.0, which was the first Team Just Cause Robotics robot. First off, let me say that before I ever started this YouTube channel, things were very different for me than they are now. I was a poor college student working on a poor college student budget. My only source of income was from being a teaching assistant for mechanical engineering classes in college. When I got into combat robotics, I chose to start with a 30 pound robot, which was a terrible idea in retrospect. It cost more than $500 out of pocket with hardly any spare parts, and another $500 or so was paid by my teammates, so it cost about $1000 in total for a featureless steel and aluminum box with a useless weapon. This was pricey in part because we used Vex Versa Planetary Gearboxes for drive, which are like $70 each, and needed at least one spare. If I had started with a smaller robot, it would have been way cheaper and smarter in retrospect. That said, we had access to a whole university machine shop, and we were able to get the university to pay for a 3D printer for the club to use eventually, so there weren't so many upfront costs. During my time at university, I learned to use and got very familiar with 3D printers, a small CNC router, and a variety of manual machine shop tools like the drill press, bandsaw, lathe, mill, and more. Shout out to Jim Alkins, who managed the shop there. Fast forward two years. I graduate from college, start working, and had some real income. I work as a mechanical engineer now, though at a different company than where I was at the time. I found out about Norwalk Havoc from Ribot Captain David Jin while attending a BattleBots watch party in Boston, hosted by the Valkyrie team. Yep, small world, I know. He pretty much encouraged me to send it and try building what would turn into Division version 1 with about 8 weeks before the competition. I had to buy almost everything. A 3D printer, motors, speed controllers, radio, receivers, batteries. This is pretty much how most people who wanted to get started in the sport will end up. However, I had one big thing going for me. The nearby Framingham Makerspace. Now, I had taught myself to use a CNC with a tiny 22 inch by 22 inch CNC router parts kit build in college. But the Makerspace has its bigger brother, a 2 foot by 4 foot ShopBot CNC router with a nearly 3 horsepower spindle. Naturally, I thought I would just save a ton of money by buying bare metal and using the router to cut all of my metal panels for me. This turned out to be a mistake. CNC gantry routers with no proper chip evacuation, lacking a super rigid frame, and with no flood or mist coolant are definitely the wrong tool to cut metal. Still, I was able to eventually cut out some awful looking aluminum front armor and base plates. There was also a gigantic Tormox CNC milling machine, but that's pretty hard to use for thin sheet metal anyway, I had no experience using anything like it before, and it's pretty hard to figure out good work holding for stuff like the 90 thousandths thick aluminum I was trying to use, so I decided to stick to what I knew. Then I found out you can outsource to laser cutting places for AR500 weapons and other metal parts, which I did. Sadly, at the time I didn't know about Send Cut Send and went to a much more expensive competitor, so I spent over $300 for 6 weapons and to get the back and sides cut from 6061 aluminum. 
At this point, Division V1 was adding up to a total of close to $1,000. I had also made some not so great part choices and needed to order new smaller weapon speed controllers, and I was frantically building this thing right down to the wire. Finally, at about midnight the night before the August 2019 Norwalk Havoc tournament, I got the bot together for its first Twitch test, did a sketchy spin up on the balcony of my apartment, and it destroyed its own receiver. Finally, at 1am the night before the Norwalk Havoc tournament, I did a Twitch test, the robot worked, and I was able to start driving to the competition. I started to actually make the drive, arrived at a nearby Airbnb a couple hours later, and slept for a couple hours before the competition. So in terms of costs, Division version 1 was about $1,000 in parts, maybe about $500 for the 3D printer I got, the LiPo charger, and other reusable stuff that I could use in future projects. Could my first robot have been cheaper? Oh, absolutely. If it weren't nearly all metal, it would have been way cheaper. However, I was able to reuse most of the electronics in Division version 2, so the cost for that version was far lower. I made more incremental updates and upgrades since then, and I eventually sold version 2.12 and all of its spares that weren't reusable for a total of about $600. I don't want to bore you with that level of detail for all of my robots, but felt it was important to share what was involved in starting out for me. Obviously, not everyone will have the same access to money or tools as I had, but you can always design your bot according to what you can manufacture and what you can afford to keep the costs a lot lower than what I had. Mini Mulcher and Draconid were both built before I had any sponsors. Mini Mulcher was an attempt to make basically the cheapest possible Antweight bot. Each bot has a bit more than $120 amortized in parts, and it got third place in a tournament without taking any real damage other than a bent shuriken blade. Draconid, instead, was a project that I took on specifically to learn about the aforementioned Tormach at the Makerspace. I machined every part myself over about three days, which was about 30 hours tending the machine in total. Originally, I wanted three full bots worth of parts, but I was learning and I scrapped quite a few parts and ended up with only about two. Draconid was really a design exercise, and it ended up being pretty bad at actually fighting, with various drive issues plaguing the bot. I'll link to videos of both of those and their full bill of materials below. I also have a full bill of materials for Shrapnel Mine that I'll link below, my other 3 pound bot with its moving saw fork mechanism. I won't be releasing the full CAD for this version though because it didn't work that great. But in total, because I was heavily leveraging sponsorship at this point, it would have been about $1000 in parts, but I only paid about $350 out of pocket for it. By now you may be wondering, where did all of that money come from? Well the short answer is mostly my day job as a mechanical engineer, for now. Longer answer. Well, if you just stumbled across my channel, hey there, nice to have you here. Stick around, because I've got tons of amazing guides and tutorials that can help anyone interested in getting into combat robotics. I own and operate Just Cause Robotics LLC, which currently has no employees and is entirely run by me in my spare time. My goal with this YouTube channel and company is to help others get started in combat robotics by reducing the barrier of entry. This barrier takes many forms. There's the knowledge barrier of not knowing how to begin, the time investment needed to learn all the skills you need to know, and the monetary investment, of course, being the focus of this video. I've been working to develop an expanding line of custom designed products to make building your first robot easier and cheaper. Shameless self-promotion aside, selling products like these has been a large source of funding for my robots ever since I started my company in July of 2021. Lately, however, the desire to create an expanding array of products has cost me as much or more than some of my robots. The way that I can afford to keep doing all of this is primarily by just taking a bunch of huge financial gambles out of pocket and saving money on the robots themselves is paramount to enabling myself to do this. That's why I'm so thankful to all of my generous sponsors, who have donated their services and parts to help make my builds better and cheaper than they otherwise could be. Send Cut Send, for instance, is a laser cutting and CNC router service that I use very widely for my projects, and they gave me a 70% discount to use on their store, and they gave me over $600 worth of parts for free to make this massive 3D printer enclosure. I'm going to eventually make an open source design for this, which anybody else can replicate, with a smaller enclosure with thinner walls for probably about $200, so stay tuned for that. Maxamps has provided LiPo batteries for free that I use in several of my bots, including the new division, which adds up to hundreds of dollars in value again. Neither of these companies have paid me to say anything nice about them, and have no editorial control over my videos, but their products and services are ones I use and can stand behind. Now to bring you to today's video sponsor, PCBWay. Unlike these other two sponsors, PCBWay does pay me, and they want me to tell you about the amazing service that they can provide in manufacturing PCBs and CNC fabrication, as well as their 3D printing service. For bot builders, I would strongly recommend taking a look at their CNC fabrication. 
I know that I used it to a great success with my 3 pound bot shrapnel mine to manufacture these 7075 aluminum billet parts. And you can see this massive green part in the robot bottom feeder being built by Team Absolute Chaos Robotics, which was also CNC machined by PCBWay. Both of our parts were machined from solid aluminum and anodized to a brilliant finish before being mailed to us ready to use. I have a referral link in the description that will give you $5 off your first order and give me a little kickback if you use it. So go to that link and go to PCBWay for all of your PCB fabrication or CNC machining needs. Now that the sponsor segment is over, I know I just told you that you can use PCBWay to get 3D CNC parts manufactured, but quite honestly, that is probably the most expensive way to get a part made. If you have access to your own CNC router or CNC milling machine, it's far more cost effective to just make the parts yourself. However, in my case, I'm willing to spend more money so that I don't have to spend as much of my time actually making the part, and I can bet on the reliability of their production facility to make sure the part is to spec and works for me, unlike when I was making parts for Draconid and messed up some parts myself. You will probably find this is very often the case when building robots, that there are sometimes ways to just buy your way out of different problems, or save yourself time by spending more money up front. 3D printing is a great example of this. Today, the cost of 3D printers themselves has come down dramatically from just how it was even 5 years ago. You can get a really great 3D printer, like a Prusa Mini or Prusa Mark 3S, for a few hundred dollars that'll work very reliably for you and keep pumping out parts that you can use in your bots. You could also get a cheaper printer like the $180 Ender 3s of the world, and those printers out of the box won't be able to print in the engineering materials that I can print with my 3D printing service that I offer but they'll still save you tons of time and money because you'll be able to print the parts the same day that you design them and make a bunch of iterations of the part in a cheaper material like PLA or PETG. And then, if you don't feel like going through the process of learning how to upgrade your printer and doing the upgrade yourself or risking breaking it in the process, you can come to somebody like me just to print the final version of your part in like a nylon, carbon fiber nylon, TPU, or other advanced engineering material that you can use on your robot. However, if you spend more money on something like a Prusa Mark 3S that you can get assembled out of the box for about $1,000, or buy the kit like I did for $800 and build it yourself in like 6 or so hours, you can have a printer that prints nylon engineering grade parts straight out of the box, as long as you get your settings right and maybe build an enclosure around it, and that way you'll be able to save tons of money in the long run from ordering parts from somebody like me who won't even be bothered to start my printer for less than about $10 in labor. Now, outside of manufacturing with the CNC or 3D printers, there are services that I would strongly recommend because they can actually save you just a ridiculous amount of time, like Send, Cut, Send, for instance. Yes, even if you have access to a makerspace like I do where there's bandsaws and drill presses, you could print out on a 2D paper printer some templates and cut along the lines for the parts and then drill the holes that you need to size and end up with basically the same thing that Send, Cut, Send can cut for you with a laser in five minutes, but It'll probably look worse, it won't be as consistent, and it'll take so much longer. And you'll still have to source and stock the material for those yourself. Send, cut, send, you can just send a 2D CAD file to, and you get the part in the mail about a week later. It's like the easiest thing ever. You can get parts made out of exotic materials that are a pain to work with, like titanium and carbon fiber and UHMW in addition to metals like aluminum and steel. And you don't have to worry about buying an entire sheet of material just to make like two parts from it. They really aren't that expensive, especially compared to something like CNC machining. So I feel like it's usually a pretty good time for money trade-off to use Send, Cut, Send. But that's just my own personal preference. If you want to build your bot exclusively out of a plastic like UHMW or HDPE, you can probably cut it with standard woodworking materials. You could even just go down to Home Depot and buy a $10 wood cutting saw and make a paper template like I said and cut out all the parts yourself by hand and you're probably fine with a pretty minimal upfront cost in tooling and that material is pretty cheap too so it wouldn't be a terrible way to go about things as long as you're okay with the relative simplicity offered by doing everything by hand. Alright time for part 5 recommendations. Keep in mind some of these are going to be with Amazon affiliate links but none of these brands are paying me to say anything nice about their products and don't sponsor me in any way I've just personally used and find their equipment to be nice and helpful for pretty much any bot builder, really. When it comes to 3D printers, this is really the big question mark that a lot of people have. I did a whole video about 3D printing that I'll put in a card above. Um, at the end of the day, 
I feel like there's really kind of three options that are or four options that are worth considering. There's like your Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, which are the super budget thing that needs a lot of work to get it to work reliably and print advanced materials, but it can work and it's the cheapest option. You've got a step up from that at about the $400 price range. You've got the Artillery Sidewinder X2, which I personally own, and then you've got the Prusa Mini. The Sidewinder X2 can print almost one foot square and 14 inches tall, whereas the Prusa Mini can only print about seven inches cubed. So obviously the size is drastically different between these two printers, but the Prusa brand name has a ton of reliability and they offer great support. Whereas like with the Ender machines, Artillery is a Chinese based company. If you need support, you're pretty much just out of luck or you need to go to support groups from other users of the printer and hope that they ran into whatever problem it is that you're having and can help you with it. Granted, there are a lot of people and oftentimes they will help you with that. So that's not necessarily a terrible route to go. I personally have the Sidewinder X2 and it works great for me. It still needs about like a $30 upgrade to be able to print in nylon, carbon fiber nylon, etc. But that's not terribly hard to do if you know what you're doing and it can print a lot faster than something like the Prusa Mini and much bigger. Then you've got the Prusa Mark 3S at about the $800 to $1,000 price point depending on if you get the kit or the fully built printer. Like I said, I have the kit for the Mark 3S. It works great. It's bulletproof and especially if you don't upgrade it at all, it will print as reliably as any printer used in a print farm will and you probably won't run into really any issues with it. Um, if you do want to upgrade it like I did so you can still print in like a carbon fiber nylon, that's still not very hard to do and you'll still probably have a great experience with it because there's tons of people who use these printers and can help you with anything that isn't directly supported by Prusa themselves. When it comes to radio transmitters, there's kind of three that I'll mention. The first one is the budget option, which would be the Flysky FSI-6. I used this one for years. It's great for starting out. It's probably the cheapest I would recommend that has the features that you would want without any of the bells and whistles you don't need. Um, if you do need some bells and whistles, the two that I'll call out are the Tenaris QX7, which I personally use, and then the Radio Master TX16, I think, is the one that a lot of other people recommend. Um, I have a multi-protocol module with my QX7, so I can use any receiver, but any of the, the Radio Master like, T-something series radios have that built in so you can basically use any receiver on the market with them and that's a really nice thing to have whereas the fly sky radio is going to unfortunately only use turnergy or fly sky receivers that follow the afhds2 protocol all right i think that's all i have for you today hope that the 12 of you still watching weren't too bored by this video let me know in the comments if there are any questions that were unanswered that you'd like to get answered in the part two video that i'll have coming out in a few weeks i will be competing this coming weekend at Norwalk Havoc on March 26th, hopefully with Division Version 3 if I ever get the parts I need in time. So I will probably try and do a recap video from that event before I make the part two for this subject. But still, either way, I think that there will be a great video to help everyone out. If you liked this video, make sure to click like. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching.